This week on Granite State Challenge, the team from Hopkinton High School takes on the team from St. Thomas Aquinas High School in Dover. Only one team will advance. Granite State Challenge starts now. Major funding for the production of Granite State Challenge is provided by Unitil. Additional funding provided by NEA New Hampshire, Safety Insurance, the New Hampshire Lottery, D.F. Richard Energy, Cognia, HRCU, and viewers like you. Thank you. Get ready. It's time for New Hampshire high schools to match wits in a high-stakes scholastic showdown. It's time for Granite State Challenge. Here's your host, John Cannon. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for another quarterfinal round on Granite State Challenge. One team's already punched their ticket to the semis. We've got two teams here this week to try to do exactly the same thing. Let's introduce them to you. First up, we have the team from Hopkinton High School, and they are led by junior captain Adam. And uh, you're a Rubik's Cube aficionado, yes? Uh, a little bit. How, how, how long does it take you to solve a three by three cube? Uh, about 15 seconds. About 15 seconds. Okay, 15 seconds. That's really good. Is this something you practice for a long time to get good at? Yeah, I've been doing it for about five years on and off. Okay, and uh, any competitions? I've uh, been to one, hoping to go to more soon. All right, awesome. Well, good luck. Adam is joined by senior Hal, who's visited how many national parks? Over 20. Over 20. Do you have on that list uh, any favorites? Yeah, I would say Yellowstone and Zion were probably my two favorites. Okay, yeah, and uh, are there any that you haven't visited yet that you uh, are on your list? I'm really excited to go to Glacier National Park in Montana and Denali in Alaska. Ooh, yeah. fantastic, that's amazing, mm -hmm. great. All right, Hal is joined by Junior Colton, uh, who's on the school hockey team, but it's not just your school on the hockey on the hockey team. Tell us. No, we actually partner with two other schools to make quite a mouthful for the announcers. We're the John Stark Hopkinton Hillsboro Deering General Hawks. So oh. I feel bad for anyone who has to <laughs> announce us on the ice. I feel bad for you for having to announce this. Uh, what position you play on the I'm hockey on team? Defense on the team. Ah, awesome. That's a good position right there. All right, and Colton is joined uh, by Junior Conrad, who uh, likes to make what food? Uh, pizza. Pizza. And where do you cook this pizza? So I have an outdoor uh, wood fire brick pizza oven. And sometimes my family will just buy dough. We'll make all the, sometimes we'll even make the dough ourselves. We'll just make all the toppings and we'll just cook it. Just fire it up and have yeah. a nice family dinner, huh? Yep. That's fantastic. Maybe you'll have to invite me over sometime. All right. The alternates for the team are freshmen Thomas and Finn, and they're coached by Matthew Krogman. And they're the team from Hopkinton High School. All right, and facing off against Hopkinton this week is a team from St. Thomas Aquinas High School in Dover, and they are led by uh, Captain Luke, who won a handwriting competition three years in a row, but not just regular handwriting. What specifically? Uh, yeah, cursive handwriting. So I won the Zaner Blazer cursive handwriting contest. Okay, and now is this something you just learned when you were in third grade or what yeah, have you? At my middle school, uh, all the second graders learned cursive and I lost the first year, which made me really mad. Maybe so, lit a fire, yeah. you know, to get so you- So I, I, I won the next three years. Nice, well, congratulations on that. It is a dying art for sure. Luke is joined by sophomore Charlie, uh, who's a runner, runs uh, cross country and track. Do you yeah. like one more than the other? Do you have a preference, one or the other? I prefer cross country. Okay, what is it about cross country? Uh, I like running longer distances better than shorter distances, and I like being outside. Yeah, yeah, I mean, in the woods, running the trails is pretty distance. great. Fantastic. Charlie is joined by Junior Merrill, who does something I think is really cool, but kind of dangerous. What is that? Um, I whitewater kayak. Okay, how did you get into whitewater kayak? Well, I had been whitewater rafting a few times and I really liked it. And I just kind of got interested in it and yeah. And so far so good. Yeah. Been safe, no yeah. injuries, no scary moments. That's good. All right, and Merrill is joined by Cade, a junior who is working towards um, an accolade that you want to add to your title? Yeah, that's right, being the chess grandmaster. Grandmaster. Yeah. So being good at chess, how do you get to become a grandmaster? Well, you accumulate points based off of competitions with other people who are ranking, and as you work up, you get to that title. All right, and, and how close are you? I'm on my way, definitely on my way. <laughs> couple, probably a couple years out at this All point. All right, but, that's fair, yeah. that's fair, nothing wrong with that. All right, welcome. The team alternates are freshman Amelia and senior Allie. And the team is coached by Katie Graham. They are the team from St. Thomas Aquinas High School. 
All right, and those are the teams this week, but we do have one more introduction. Of course, back with us again is our judge, Ann Belanger. All right. Well, introductions are out of the way, teams. Go ahead and grab those signaling devices. We're going to play Granite State Challenge. In round one, we play for 10-point toss-up questions. So Hopkinton, St. Thomas, good luck, and here we go. In 1853, this American businessman started a company in San Francisco to manufacture blue jeans. Luke of St. Thomas. Levi. Give that. Uh, can you give me the last name? Do you know the last name? Strauss. Yes, good. All right, teams, carnivores eat meat, herbivores eat plants, insectivores eat insects. What do frugivores eat? Cade of St. Thomas. Fruit. That's right. Before he became a justice on the U.S. Supreme Court, this man served as a senator from Alabama and was a member of the Ku Klux Klan. He served on the court from 1937 to 1971. Hal of Hopkinton. Hugo Black. Correct. This Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States served from 1993 until her death in 2020. Hal of Hopkins. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yes. Author Mario Puzo wrote this 1969 novel about the Mafia that was later turned into a trilogy of films directed by Francis Ford Coppola. Hal of Hopkins. The Godfather. Yes. The 1957 Mary Melody's cartoon, What's Opera, Doc?, starred Bugs Bunny and Elmer Fudd, and the music of this German composer's operas, The Ring of Nibelung, The Flying Dutchman, Tannhauser, and the second opera from the Ring Cycle, The Valkyrie. Colton of Hopkinton. Hans Wagner. Uh, sorry, no. Luke of St. Thomas. Wagner. Yes, we'll give that to you. It's Richard Wagner. Richard Wagner. In this 1857 decision, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled 7-2 that no person descended from slaves could be an American citizen and therefore could have no standing to sue in federal court. Luke of St. Thomas. Plessy v. Ferguson. Sorry, no. Hopkinton? Hal? Dred Scott. Yes. Good grief, the final strip of this comic ran in 2000, one day after the death of its creator. Luke of St. Thomas. Peanuts. Yes. Teams, what do you call the lipid-rich material that surrounds the axons of nerve cells? A Luke of St. Thomas? Nerve casing. Sorry, no. It is the myelin, or the myelin sheath. Before the pre this president took office in 1913, black workers made up 10% of an integrated federal workforce. That changed when he permitted his cabinet heads to segregate their departments. Hal of Hopkinton. Woodrow Wilson. Yes. This puppeteer performed the Muppet characters Cookie Monster, Miss Piggy, and Grover, as well as Yoda in the Star Wars films. Hal of Hopkinton. Oz. Frank Oz, yes. This Nashua, New Hampshire native was the 76th governor of New Hampshire from 1989 to 1993 and served as a U.S. Senator from New Hampshire from 1993 to 2011. He also won $853,492 in a 2005 Powerball drawing when he matched five out of six numbers. Hal of Hopkinton? John Sununu? Sorry, no. It was Judd Gregg won all that money and was governor and senator. All right, teams, founded in 1620, this is considered the first English colony in New England. Hal of Hopkinton. Jamestown. Sorry, no. St. Thomas. Merrill. Plymouth. Plymouth is right, in New England. These structures that convert wind to energy are the enemy of two dawns, Quixote and Trump. Charlie of St. Thomas. Windmills. Windmills, yes. <laughs> In 1969, this politician and teacher became the first and to date only female prime minister of Israel. She served from 1969 to 1974. Is Golda Meir. All right, teams, our next question is our Unitil power question. It's worth double points, so a 20 point toss up coming to you on your monitors. Take a look. This superhero has no superpowers but he does have a handy utility belt and a butler named Alfred Pennyworth. Luke of St. Thomas. Batman. Yes. This show about a porous multicellular organism and his friends premiered on Nickelodeon in 1999. 
Luke of St. Thomas. SpongeBob SquarePants. That's right. In 1972, this U.S. president directed NASA. Well, we will not get to the end of that question, but at the end of a good, fast-paced round, it looks like St. Thomas out to a bit of a lead. All right, teams, great first round. Keep that up. As we go into our second round, we will be doing our three strikes and you're out round. In this round, each team gets 10 questions. We go player by player down the line, 10 points for each correct response. And we go until you answer all 10 or until three strikes and you're out. Each team has three passes. And just as a reminder, something in the previous question will be the inspiration for the next question. So Hopkinton, we will start with you. Adam, this is your question. This collection of locks, canals, and channels that runs through the U.S. and Canada connects the Atlantic Ocean to the Great Lakes. I don't know. It is the St. Lawrence Seaway. Hal, the Great Lakes formed around 14,000 years ago at the end of the last glacial period. How many Great Lakes are there? Five. Yes. Colton, this New Hampshire lake was the setting for the 1981 movie On Golden Pond. It is also home to a science center you may have visited on a field trip. Squam Lake. Correct. Conrad. The 1981 movie On Golden Pond starred Father Henry and daughter Jane from this acting family. Uh, can I skip? You can pass. Uh, can I pass? Yes. Adam? Fonda. The Fonda family is right. Hal. Actors Jane Fonda, Sally Field, Lily Tomlin, and Rita Moreno star in a 2023 movie, 80 for Brady, about a group of women traveling to see this team in the Super Bowl. Uh, the Patriots. Yes. Colton. The 1992 movie Patriot Games starred Harrison Ford as Jack Ryan. The movie was based on a novel by this author who also wrote The Hunt for Red October. Tom Clancy. Correct. Conrad. Harrison Ford is known for playing action heroes, including Han Solo in Star Wars and this whip-yielding archaeologist. Indiana Jones. Correct. Adam, this Indiana city was the home to the members of the Jackson 5 and is the subject of a song from the musical The Music Man. Gary, Indiana. Correct. In February of 1970, Hal, uh... This song by the Jackson 5, all about learning simple things, knocked Let It Be by the Beatles out of the top spot on the Billboard, Billboard Top 100 list. Pass. All right. Am I allowed to pass to Conrad? You have one more pass, yes. Pass. Conrad. ABC. Correct. Adam, this song by Lil Nas X holds the record uh, by holding the number one spot on the Billboard Top 100 list for 19 weeks. Old Town Road. That is correct, and that is the end of your three strikes round. <laughs> nice job, Hopkinton. We're going to turn our attention to St. Thomas. Same drill team. And Luke, we start with you. This 2010 movie tells the story of supervillain Gru, who has plans to shrink and steal the moon. Despicable me. Correct. Charlie, in the nursery rhyme, hey diddle diddle, who jumped over the moon? Cow. Yes. Meryl, this woman was voted the greatest female athlete of the 20th century by Sports Illustrated. She holds the record in the heptathlon and once held the record in the long jump. Uh, pass. All right, pass to Cade. Schneider. Sorry, it's Jackie Joyner Kersey. Luke, the heptathlon includes seven events, 100 meter hurdles, the high jump, the 200 meter dash, the long jump, the javelin throw, the 800 meter run, and this event where you hurl a heavy ball. Shot put. Correct. Charlie, the phrase shot heard round the world refers to the opening shot of this battle on April 19th, 1775. Lexington. We'll give that to you. Lexington and Concord, okay. Uh, Merrill, Concord, New Hampshire is the final resting place of this US president. Pass. Pass to Cade, your question. Pierce. Franklin Pierce is right. Luke, Franklin Pierce signed this act into law that effectively repealed the Missouri Compromise. The Kansas-Nebraska Act. Correct. Charlie, the band Kansas, in this 1977 song, claimed that we were all just dust in this. The wind. Yes. Merrill, 
When a tropical storm has sustained winds of this speed, it is officially a hurricane. 87. It is 74. Cade, this hurricane, known as the Great New England Hurricane and the Long Island Express, was a Category 5 storm that hit New England in this year. 2005. Sorry, it was 1938, and that is the end of your Three Strikes Rounds. All right, teams, at this time, I would like to invite the alternates to join their teams up at the podium as we roll into our 60-second round. In our 60-second round, uh, both teams will have a crack at 10 questions in a category, and the team trailing will choose the category first. Um, and the team trailing is... All right, so Hopkinton, we will start with you. And Adam, you are the captain, uh, and you can speak for your team. You can talk to your team, and you get to choose from these categories. Tell me a story, this could be, and pig in a poke. Tell me a story. Tell me a story. All right. The answers to the following will all include the word story. Okay? 60 seconds. Start the clock. This is an amusement park in Glen, New Hampshire. Storyland. Yes. You will find Woody and Buzz Lightyear in this 1995. Toy Story. Yes. This movie tells the story of the nothing trying to engulf the land of Fantasia. Never ending story. Yes. This musical is based on Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. West Side Story? Yes. The Hugo Award is given out for this type of writing. Storybook? Sorry, short story. Filmmakers will often create one of these visual aids prior to Storyboard? Filming. Yes. This is the name uh, to both a 1970 film and a 2008 song by Taylor Swift. Love Story? Yes. You might read one of these to a child before they go to sleep. Bedtime Story? Yes. One Direction had a hit with this song in 2013. Story of My Life? Yes. And the first season of this anthology series was titled Murder House. Pass. It is American Horror Story. And that is eight, eight out of 10 on your 60 second round. <laughs> nice job, Hopkinton. We'll turn our attention to St. Thomas. And Luke, you can speak for your team. You can choose from This Could Be and Pig in a Poke. We'll take Pig in a Poke. Pig in a Poke. All right. The answers to the following will all be related to pigs. Luke, I'll take your answer as the team answer. 60 seconds, start the clock. He was friends with Charlotte the Spider. Will were the pig. Yes, his catchphrase is, that's all folks. Porky pig. Yes, he hangs out with Pooh and Tigger in the 100 acre wood. Piglet. Yes, she is a Muppet with a diva attitude. It's Piggy. Yes, she has a younger brother named George. Peppa Pig. Yes. He is a warthog who hangs out with Timon in The Lion King. Pumba. Yes. She is a fancy little pig created by Ian Falconer. Gwendolyn the pig. It is Olivia. He is always surrounded by a cloud of dust in Peanuts cartoons. Pig pen. Yes. They stymied the big bad wolf. The three little pigs. Yes. And he is a piggy bank in Toy Story. Piggy? <laughs> it was ham and eight out of 10 on your 60 second round. All right, nice job teams, alternates. You can go ahead and take your seats and we are going to head into round four. In round four, we're gonna pick back up with our toss up questions, but we're gonna double the point value. So these are 20 point toss up questions. We're also going to be deducting 20 points for any incorrect responses. So play smart and strategic. Hopkinton and St. Thomas, good luck and here we go. Pelican Island National Wildlife Refuge, home to brown pelicans, wood storks, and American oyster catchers, was founded in 1903 and is the first wildlife refuge in the U.S. In what state will you find it? Tough to take a guess on that, but it is in Florida. This flap of cartilage in your throat covers the opening to your windpipe when you swallow and keeps you from choking on food. The Luke of St. Thomas. The uvula. Sorry, no. It is called the epiglottis. Veronica Roth's 2011 post-apocalyptic novel Divergent takes place in this U.S. city. The Luke of St. Thomas. Chicago. Correct. All right, teams, for this next question, go ahead and take a look at your monitors. 
You are looking at Frances Perkins. In 1933, she became the first woman to serve in the cabinet. She served in this post, in this post, which is currently held by former Boston Mayor Marty Walsh. Hal of Hopkinton? Uh, Secretary of Labor. That is right. This fictional detective first appeared in the 1887 novel, A Study in Scarlet. Charlie of St. Thomas. Sherlock Holmes. That's right. In 1950, President Truman ordered that control of these be seized by the U.S. Army to avoid a strike. Colton of Hopkinton. Railroads. That's right. All right, team's a math question for you if you have pen pencil and paper in case you want to use it. What is one-eighth plus one-half? Adam of Hopkinton? Five-eighths. That's right. In this nursery rhyme, first published in Tommy Thumb's Pretty Songbook in 1744, a mouse ran up a clock. Charlie of St. Thomas. Hickory Dickory Dock. That's right. Teams, what scale would you use to measure the hardness of a mineral? Luke of St. Thomas. Mohs scale. That's right. Fidel Castro served as the first secretary of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Cuba, where he served from 1965 to 2011. He was followed by his brother Raul, who served from 2011 to 2021, who is the current first secretary of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Cuba. It is Miguel Diaz-Canel. In reaction to the Protestant Reformation, this group, which met between 15... 45 and 1563 in Italy, in 25 sessions laid out and clarified the doctrine of the Catholic Church. Luke of St. Thomas. The Council of Trent. That's right. Teams, which amendment to the U.S. Constitution ratified in 1913 allows for the popular election of U.S. Senators? Merrill of St. Thomas. 18. Sorry, no. Hopkinton? Adam? 17. 17 is right. Teams, you might call something that is very tiny, minuscule. Spell minuscule. A Luke of St. Thomas. M-I-N-I-S-C-U-L-E. Sorry, that is incorrect. Not going to take a chance on that spelling question. Make me do it. M-I-N-U-S-C-U-L-E. This poet lived with her husband, poet Donald Hall, on Eagle Pond Farm in Wilmot, New Hampshire. Rural life and imagery was often found in her works. Her name is Jane Kenyon. All right, teams, take another look at your monitors for the upcoming question. Actor Nathan Lane has played notable roles on Broadway, in films, and on TV, including Nathan Detroit in Guys and Dolls, Max Bialystok in The Producers, Pepper Saltzman in Modern Family, and Timon, a member of this ground-dwelling mammal in Disney's The Lion King. Merrill of St. Thomas. Meerkat. That is right. This member of the Beatles is known for the songs Something, Here Comes the Sun, While My Guitar Gently Weeps, and Taxman. Charlie of St. Thomas. George Harrison. Yes. In 1991, Tim Berners-Lee released papers describing his idea for this. Adam of Hopkinton. The World Wide Web. That's right. This man, who was the Poet Laureate of the United States from 2007 to 2008, won the Pulitzer Prize for Poetry in 1990 for The World Doesn't End. He was Professor Emeritus of American Literature and Creative Writing at the University of New Hampshire. Charlie of St. Thomas. Billy Collins. Sorry, no. It was Charles Simak. Actor Stockard Channing played First Lady Abby Bartlett in the TV series The West Wing and Pink Lady Betty Rizzo in this 1978 movie. Merrill of St. Thomas. Greece. Yes. Teams, what would you use the formula 2 pi r to calculate? Adam of Hopkinton. Circumference of a circle. That's right. Dutch exotic dancer Margaretha Gertrude McLeod was convicted of being a spy for Germany in World War I and executed by a French firing squad in 1917. Today, many feel she was used as a scapegoat by France. She's more commonly known by this stage name. Conrad of Hopkinton. Matahari. That's right. The World Science Fiction Society has handed out this award for best novel since 1953. Winners have included Robert Heinlein, Frank Herbert, and Isaac Asimov. Hal of Hopkinton. The Nebula Award. Sorry, no. St. Thomas? It is the Hugo Award. Tupac Shakur had a tattoo on his back reading Exodus 1813. 
1831 in reference to a rebellion led by this Southampton County, Virginia slave in 1831. It was Nat Turner. This amendment to the U.S. Constitution limits presidents to two terms. It was number 22. This four-time NBA champion played for the Orlando Magic, the Boston... It Sorry, folks, we're not going to get to the end of that question. And by a very narrow margin of victory, Hopkinton will be moving on to the semifinals. All right, great game, Hopkinton. Great, great match, tight match. Uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks when you face off against a team from Merrimack High School and St. Thomas Aquinas. Tough loss, but a hard-fought game. Congratulations on your first win. We hope you had fun. We had fun having you here. And we hope you had fun watching at home as well. We do hope you join us next week when the teams from Plymouth Regional High School and Bow High School face off. That will do it for us this week on Granite State Challenge. I hope you learned something. I know I did. I hope you did as well. We'll see you next time. Major funding for the production of Granite State Challenge is provided by Unitil. Additional funding provided by NEA New Hampshire, Safety Insurance, the New Hampshire Lottery, D.F. Richard Energy, Cognia, HRCU, and viewers like you. Thank you.